What would you tell Mark Davis, who I'm sure you've known for a very, very long time? What would you tell him? I mean, that one, um, um, uh, and I'll, I'll pontificate as well in setting you up, that, that one line statement of saying I've accepted his resignation. I mean, that, that's not even remotely close to uh, enough. So what would you th- counsel him to do uh, uh, on, on speaking about it? And then, of course, cleaning it up and figuring out what to do next. What would you counsel him? Well, I'll answer that in two regards. I give Mark the benefit of the doubt that he would not have hired John had he known of these emails. But he did hire John and later learned of these emails. And he does now need to address that strongly and unequivocally. And the other thing I would encourage him to do is to reach out to the Raider fan base. I mean, so, you know, period, full stop. He needs to, he needs to address it, and he needs to address it strongly and clearly. Period, full stop. Now, I will go on and say he also needs to reach out and embrace the Raider fan base and thank them for their ongoing support. Look, as we know, last year, Allegiant Stadium opened, but no fans were allowed. So this is the first season in which those magnificent fans are allowed in the stadium. And the team was off to a good start until it stumbled a bit. And then this. And that fan base has stood with that team through thick and thin. And I think he needs to address the issue substantively and embrace the fan base. And then lastly, uh, again, this is uh, the Raider organization that uh, is front and center. And the email was a former Raider coach who was a highly successful broadcaster at the time, sending it to a former Raider executive who is now on another team. And what was in that email that, as we already mentioned in this conversation, Amy Trask, was uh, written by somebody who felt comfortable writing it and felt comfortable hitting send to the person who he felt comfortable would feel comfortable receiving it. Um, And those are all Raiders, all of them. And this is the Raiders organization and his son at the front and center of all this. What would Al Davis be thinking right now, Amy Trask? You know, I've been asked that a lot, Rich, and as a general rule, I try not to answer questions for Al Mm -hmm. because I can hear his voice ringing in my ear as to what he would say if he knew I was answering questions for him. And I can't repeat on air what he would be saying to me because I don't want to get you in trouble. (laughs) Uh, But I will say this. Yes. He would have been infuriated by those emails, um, sickened by them, heart sick. I, I don't I mean, he would have been heart sick, but he would have been infuriated. I won't project. I won't say what I think he would have done. I can tell you he and I would have discussed it at length, and I can, con- I can tell you that no matter what language I could use with you on air right now to describe his reaction, his language would have been stronger. <sighs> I mean, he hired you, Amy. I mean, he put a, a, a female in the position that he put you in, and he put Archell in the position that he put in him, him in and was the first to do it. And this is the organization that is – front and center of these conversations, uh, I, I, it boggles. It really it, does, Amy. It, it, it you know? does. Um, and, and by the way, I'll add Tom Flores. And so, yes, you know, course. chronologically, not in order of importance, I'd be the last, but chronologically, Tom Flores, Amy Trask, Art Shell, mm-hmm. And look, going back to when he hired me, can you name another NFL team owner who in the mid-80s would have hired a girl? <laughs> it's just... It, it does boggle. Um, and again, I'll, I'll say what I believe I said at the beginning, which is the fact that this story broke on the anniversary of his death is particularly poignant. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.